start with uh, Mark and then we'll go to Dash. Hopefully go to Mark. Dash, fire away. All right, I'll fire away. Coach, I know we've talked about the uh, freshmen, uh, you know, obviously a good, a good bit this year, but uh, with this season winding down, maybe even looking ahead to next year, kind of talk about their years this season, what you've seen from them and what you want to continue to see from them the rest of this season and on into next year. Well, you, you never know these days um, with, with the climate of college basketball, you, you can't look ahead to the following year um, as early as you, you used to be able to do. Yeah. Right? Uh, who knows what our roster will look like next year. I certainly like those three guys a lot uh, as people, as players. All three of them have had um, – really good freshman years, especially considering how good our league is and the um, the lack of freshmen impacting this league um, at the level that, that used to happen. It used to be more prevalent, of course, um, you know, with the influx of, of, of older guys and transfers. Um, you know, Silas got an earlier opportunity, of course, and he's, he's, he took advantage, you know, really from day one. He's had a really good year. Blue gradually earned more and more minutes, gotten better throughout the year. And Dylan um, took him a little bit uh, of time as well. Um, and he's playing his his best basketball. So all three of those guys are running their own race, of course. Um, all three are playing uh, at a high level and impacting, again, the best basketball league in the country as true freshmen in different ways. They complement each other well. Um, <clears throat> we just left the practice floor and all three of them had a really good practice. They just they bring it every day. Just a quick follow up to another study. How is Jabri doing this week? Any chance he's able to play tomorrow? Um, he he's day to day. He's um, he did not go today. Uh, we'll see if he goes tomorrow. Um, I, I'm he's doing everything he can. That's who he is. You know, he's working his butt off to try to get healthy. Go to uh, Jordan and then Palmer. Mike, uh, with this Auburn team, every game they've won this year has been by double digits. Just what is it about this group? Once they get it rolling, it makes teams hard to keep up with them. They're, I mean, where do you start? They're they're, they're just they're really really good. I, there's a handful of teams have a chance to win the whole thing, get to a Final Four. They they've got to be in that conversation. And that that's that's my opinion at least. Uh, their depth, um, their skill level, their role definition. Um, their front court um, has got to be one of the best few in the country. And then and, and you look at the back court, they got a really good back court too. They run good stuff, of course. Um, they play with confidence. Um, and they uh they're, they're playing, they're playing really hard defensively. You know, they're they're really connected defensively. They turn you over, they block shots, they alter shots, they just smother you. They're really good. I wanted to follow up real quick and just ask about how you guys have played on the road, you know, so many competitive games. What is it about this group that for the most part you've seen them handle playing on the road so well? You know, we're, um, we've been competitive for the most part um, on the road. I, I would say probably based on the fact that we've just, we've, we've got some guys that are pretty resilient. You know, we've got guys that, uh, that continue to work. We've talked about it all year, good practices, consistent uh, work ethic, consistent level of uh, competitive spirit, which just kind of gives you a chance. Of course, um, we'll have to play by far our best game, you know, of the season to have some success tomorrow. Yeah, Mike, as you go back and you look at the first game against Auburn and then Tuesday night as well, just what are the things that you would like to replicate um, and, and ride that momentum into Saturday? Well, we play with a lot of confidence in the first, uh, say, 30 minutes of the Auburn game, uh, if memory serves correct. I, down the stretch, um, you know, they, they were really good, of course. I thought we had an emotional letdown there late, um, you know, and it was another one of those games at home where um, it just kind of falls apart on you a little bit despite playing really well at times. Um, or even, you know, the majority of the of the first part of the game. Um, so, you know, we'll have to put 40 together. Um, you know, their their arena will be rocking, of course, and uh, we'll have to have uh, a lot of poise and play through adversity, respond to adversities. 
Uh, but we're coming off a game where I thought we played really hard. We were really solid defensively. We were connected. Um, we're going to have to defend uh, at that level uh, or even better. You know, we're going to have to defensive rebound as well as we have all year. Um, and then we've got to value the ball at a higher level than we, than we did in the first half the other day. I thought against Ole Miss in the second half, we did a really good job with our decisions. But live ball turnovers – at Auburn, um, F shots in the paint at Auburn are recipes for disaster. So, we, you know, we've got to play with poise. We've got to make good decisions, um, but play with confidence at the same time. Go to Mark Weiser and then finish up with Roger. Mike, I'm curious with guys like uh, Justin Hill and RJ Melendez, do you have a good sense of what their plans are after this year? Are, are those ongoing conversations you have so you can have a good read on on your roster as you build it for uh, you know ongoing. No, no, those conversations will happen um, as I've talked about all year to our guys when the ball stops bouncing for this team. I mean, it's the challenge for all of us, uh, you know, at at this level, really throughout Division One basketball, is is to stay the course, right, and see um, where you finish. You know, finish as strong as you possibly can, um, continue to play and continue to, to to strive for success and development when it's over it's over and there'll be plenty of time for those conversations um so yeah we, we haven't had any yet um but we will uh with with everyone on the team again when uh, when this season's over but we're anxious for tomorrow's opportunity you know to see how competitive we can be against one of the best teams in the country at home of course um and then we're we're excited for the SEC tournament and quickly, uh, with Jalen Deloach, I guess he was a DNP last game. Was that a matter of matchups? Yeah, I mean, it's it, it, we got thirteen guys, right? We got yeah. we're returning Mari, so we've we've got twelve. Uh, Sonny is back, healthy. He's cleared now, and so it, it's just it's hard to play 10, 11, 12 guys. Um, heck, we've played as deep as most teams in our league. Um, Dylan James is playing really well, you know. Uh, um, you can look at it like, um, like uh, you know, Jalen didn't get the opportunity, or you can look at it that you know uh, Dylan really took advantage of of, of his opportunity. And um, who knows, maybe maybe a month ago we should have been playing Dylan a little bit more. You know, you just you just try to read each opportunity individually. Um, and all these guys, the challenge is is to stay ready. You know, uh, JJ was was ready this morning at practice and worked and. Um, I'm sure if his number were, were called tomorrow, he'd, he'd go out there and compete. All right. Any other questions? Thanks, Thanks guys. guys. <clears throat>